I just got this Harman Kardon HK595 subwoofer, it's a 2.1 system, but if you see closely to the speaker, it has many controls, it has a, a headphone jack, volume and effects, but if you open the unit, even that it has a 6-pin connector, in the inside it only has a, one pair of wire for the speaker and another pair for the control. So I'm not sure how this is managed, if it's a digital control, I don't know. But I'm not going to find out. The spoiler alert, I'm not going to fix this subwoofer. I don't know even if it works because it turns on, but I can get any any sound out of it. So I'm just going to disassemble, see what's inside, and I'm going to install another amplifier instead of the one that is coming in the inside. Uh, even that it is Harman Kardon, I believe it is really a Dell system because it says Dell in the in the circuits. But let's open it so you can see what's inside. Again, I'm not going to attempt to fix it, but it's going to be interesting to see how the components he has and all the stuff. A little complicated to separate because not everything is with sockets. Uh, some some of the cables are soldered in, so I will have to uh, desolder them. But this one has a jack. This is the control for the speaker. We are going to look a little bit closer later in the video. But these four wires come from the subwoofer, and also there are other two pairs of wires, red and black, going to the subwoofer. There must be another circuit in there because I only see one I see for the uh, for the amplification of the two speakers, so there must be another amplificator inside the subwoofer. But here are the two cables for the speakers, and this is the cable that goes with one of the speakers as you can see, there are two small wires, very thin, so I believe they transport signals on some sort of signal. So let me take it apart. Here you can see the power supply. Uh, I took some measurements and it looks like it is for 26, 28 volts. This is the rack speaker with the cable, this very small cable. So as you can see, even that the connector is for six pins, only four of them are in use and two of them are for the analog signal or the amplified signal for the speaker. There is the speaker and we have here a switch, a fuse box and the input for the AC. Very simple circuit is uh, usually this kind of brands has more capacitors, uh, ceramic and mylar and things like that for filtering. But this is this looks very simple as like I said before, it says Dell on the on the circuit, this is the digital part because it has an input for digital audio also. The amplifier for the speakers is this one and this is the input board. It has two input for analog audio, uh, front and rear, and one input for digital audio. Those TDAs are octal buffers or some, something like that. They are not, even that they said TDA, are, they are not typical amplifiers. And this is the lower part of the circuit board. This is the board for the amplificator. 
of the subwoofer. It is a single circuit that it is monorail, so it goes for the subwoofer. But let me take a closer look. This is a 8225H from Toshiba. Looks a lot like the amplifier using in the FJ Cruiser. Well, this is a 8225 amplificator. It's for 45 watts. I believe it used like from 18 to 26 volts. So of course, the watts are going to vary depending on how much voltage you put. But suppose we use the 28 volts, 26, whatever. It, the maximum it, will, it could uh, output is 40 watts, 45 watts, sorry. And this is the configuration recommended by the, by the vendor. As you can see, it has two amplifiers bridged inside the uh, amplifier. I guess you can split it in two outputs. Again, this is configured right now for the subwoofer. This is the output for the two satellite speakers. Even that is, it is for four outputs. They are bridging two of the of the outputs and the other two outputs in order to make it into just two outputs in stereo, and that way they can they can zoom the power of each of the outputs. This is for I believe it is tw uh, twenty sixteen to twenty uh, watts. Here you have it in this in in its double bridge configuration: uh, left speaker and right speaker. This is how it should be configured into, into the subwoofer. So the idea is to put this board. You already seen it in another video. And I just going to close it like this and install this amplifier board in the aluminum case or, or cover. If you see look something weird in that, it's because I added another the heat sink because I just wanted to be in the safe side. So this amplifier board is 2.1. I'm going to use the same power supply and it already has for output for the two speakers for the two satellite speakers and another output for the for the subwoofer. So this is going to simplify things a lot. Still, I'm going to use or need a preamplifier for it. I speak about some videos when they show you how they assemble a given amplifier and they just connect a phone or something like that and they have sound coming out of it. But those amplifiers can give you a lot more if you put a preamplifier. In this case, this this is a 50 plus 50 for right, left and right speakers and 100 for the subwoofer, 100 watts. But you are not going to get that much if you don't connect a preamplifier. But I'm going to fix that uh, just installing a, a small mixer that I fixed in another video. I'm going to leave you the link for that video in here. But you can hear it in, later. I'm going to test it with the console and without the console, so you can hear the difference. So the multimeter is registering uh, 28 volts. I think it needs calibration, but even if it is really 28 volts, I don't think it's going to damage my my amplifier board. And even that, this is an experiment. I'm not planning on using this speaker. It's just an idea, an experiment. So I'm going to make these holes a little bit bigger. I think I will have to cave another hole in there so I can place the, the amplifier board in the aluminum cover. So the new amplifier consists of two TPA3116 ampli uh, class D amplifiers. Each one is for two outputs of 50 watts, but one of the two is uh, in bridge mode, so that is going to give you 50 w uh, 100 watts. I don't think they are really 100 watts, but at least 80, they are going to pull out some 80 watts. This is the configuration in the amplifier board. 
one of the amplifiers in stereo and the other one in in mono with with some operational amplifiers or or 741s configured as um, filters to filter the subwoofer output. So you can see like, here we have two outputs, 80 watts it says in the schematic, but really I don't think it's going to pull even 40 watts, but it's going to give us a lot more power than the original port because this is a class D. So it, it, with the same voltage, it's going to give you a lot more wattage out of the, on the speakers. So I made a, the holes, as you can see now the potentiometers fit in the three holes. So I'm going to screw them into this cover. And also I need to install the output for the speakers for the left and right. And also the input for the audio. And another cable that doesn't necessarily has to come through this, this cover will be for the subwoofer. Speaking of the subwoofer, since I'm going to upgrade the amplifier, I need to upgrade the speaker too. So, in other words, uh, this Harman Kardon video is not at all of a Harman Kardon speaker because I have removed almost, well, entirely all the Harman Kardon components. I'm going to place this bigger speaker because since we are, the old one is for 40 watts tops and we are going to start injecting 80 watts at least in the new speaker so we need um, more power handling speaker so i'm going to cut some a uh, bigger hole here in order to install the new speaker the new speaker is for 300 watts so it should be good enough or more than enough So here we have everything mounted in the aluminum cover. As you can see the power supply, the bridge rectifier, the amplifier board. Here you have the right, left and right speakers. The input, analog input stereo. I just put this piece from another amplifier that I had lying around and connected this cable here. Here's the power. You have two options for the power here and that's it i just have to solder a cable for the subwoofer and we can start assembling everything so now i have the cable for the subwoofer so i just need to assemble everything And I want to apologize for my bad English. I understand that not many of you are going to understand me, but I'm too lazy to write subtitles. And, and I'm doing these videos in Spanish and also in English. And I, I'm trying my best to be understand in another language. But uh, I don't know. I, I'm very lazy to write the scripts or... One option that I can do is, uh, in another video, I use the, the the Macintosh has this function that you write something and it, it will read it for you. So, in another video, once I was very, I have a, an infection in my throat, so I couldn't speak very well, not even in Spanish or, or, or Italian. So, so, what I did was to write everything in a text document and have the Mac read it for me and not read it in the video. And I think that was very understandable for, for English speakers and Spanish speakers because I had to do the, do the video in both languages. So, put it in the comments if you prefer that, uh, that, that option that I use the Macintosh to speak for me in English, uh, so you can understand uh, much better my videos. But in the meanwhile, <laughs> you you have to this uh, uh, to understand like like it is. But again, you can ask questions in the comment section and for uh, uh, something that you didn't quite understand on the 
and the barely explanations I do in my videos. Again, this is not for you to become an expert. Just I'm just sharing knowledge the or the hobbies we we sometimes have. Well, here you have it working. So now let's listen to it. What you are hearing right now is only the subwoofer. I have not connected the satellite speakers. So I'm going to plug one of them and let's see how this sounds change. And again, this is without the... It sounds pretty good, much better with, with the mixer. But I'm going to run another test. I'm going to install or connect my bass guitar. If it can take the bass guitar, it can take anything because Bass guitar, you cannot just simply connect it to a home theater or, or car amplifier and get a, a good sound. You are going to see the difference once I connect it. So it sounds pretty pretty good with the bass guitar and I'm going to connect the guitar later but it sounds pretty good I'm satisfied with the sound but again I'm not going to use it because I already have an amplifier for instruments I already have uh, different home theaters and soundboards in the home but this was just an experiment to share with you just to give you an idea of the, of the many other options you can have when you find this kind of speakers or other circuits. So thank you for watching my videos and see you next time.